Welcome to a noob's guide to Rhesus of Thrace. This is Rhesus, King of Thrace. He showed up late to the Trojan War and had his throat slit in bed without ever having thrown a punch. In fact, he never even speaks in the Iliad and even his death happens off screen, so we never even meet him really. So how the hell did Rhesus wind up as a DLC in a Total War Saga Troy? Well, his five minutes of fame burned bright enough that even 3,000 years later, we still talk about what a clutch player this guy could have been. A barbarian badass with a taste for hard women, fast horses, and golden armor. Rhesus, King of Thrace, is one of the great what-ifs of the Trojan War. In this video, we'll go over Rhesus' mythology, how it inspires his gameplay and mechanics, and then give a few tips on how he's supposed to be played. In the story of the Trojan War, Rhesus is all but forgotten today, but he was important enough to ancient Athenians to warrant his own play by Euripides. Sure, it was a thinly-veiled imperialist propaganda piece used to justify their invasion of Macedon, but it still starred Rhesus, and that's what's important here. In in year 9 of the Trojan War and Book 10 of the Iliad, Achilles is still refusing to fight and the Trojans have pushed the Greeks back to their beach camp and have them surrounded. At first light, Hector, Prince of Troy, will unleash hell and finally drive the Achaean Blight from his homeland. And that's when a herald for the Thracian army arrives at Hector's camp, announcing that the golden-armored gouger of Greeks, the white-horsed champion of chariots, the one and only Rhesus of Thrace, had arrived. At the last possible minute, nine years after having been summoned, Hector was curt enough with him that he could have fronted the rock band Nirvana. Two other kings of Thrace had managed to get there on time, after all, and Hector would be damned before he split the spoils with this up-jumped barbarian as well. That Rhesus had been invaded by Scythians at the start of the war and had been fighting them back all this time was immaterial, and when the Herald asked where it was safe to pitch camp, Hector told him he could pitch it up a goat's backside and sleep under a bush for all he cared. Corralled on the beach, the desperate Greeks dispatched scouts to try and sneak into the Trojan camp for information. Deadlier than diphtheria, Diomedes volunteered, and then voluntold Odysseus to join him. Going full commando, the dynamic duo of Dickory put on leather armor and smeared themselves in ash, while Odysseus wore a boar tusk helmet so it wouldn't reflect the light as they sneaked over in the darkness. Pause. Two seconds. C.A. Sophia really doesn't get enough credit for their research in this game. That's the exact boar tusk helmet mentioned by Homer, patterned after one found in a Mycenaean tomb. For a game about mythology, you can play spot the historical highlight all day and still keep finding new things. The Trojans had the same idea about sending a scout to the enemy camp, and after a bit of haggling, agreed to pay their man Achilles' chariot and horses once they killed him the following morning. I realize this detail sounds extraneous, but chariot teams are the Bugatti Veyrons of the ancient world, and it is important to know that for what happens next. In fact, if you haven't seen my summary on the historical basis for the Trojan War, you might just want to click on that link above and, you know, detour for a second. The Trojan scout draped a wolf pelt over his back and then put a weasel skin cap on, then dropped onto all fours and wandered his way into no man's land, howling occasionally to sell the ruse, intending to, quite literally, weasel his way into the Greek camp. Odysseus spotted him instantly. A short chase and a hard fall later, Diomedes started heating up his favorite pair of torture tongs to extract intel. They weren't even warm to the touch when the Trojan offered to spill the beans in exchange for his life. Rhesus and his reinforcements smelt of opportunity, so Diomedes slit the man's throat and they snuck into the camp. It wasn't strictly necessary to kill the Trojan scout, but Diomedes needed to get warmed up. Once inside, they found Rhesus' royal tent and then Diomedes got down to it, shanking the Thracian royal guard one by one while Odysseus drug their bodies outside so the blood wouldn't spook the horses. Diomedes would have kept on piling corpses all night, but Odysseus tried to ride away with Rhesus' armor and chariot and keep them all for himself. The pair rode back into the night, leaving a bloody trail of Rhesus' pieces. Even a moronic alien with a head shaped like a penis could follow. And just like that, the extraneous assholes of Athena ended Rhesus' story before it ever began. Outside of Homer's brief mention, Rhesus only appears in one other ancient myth, involving an Anatolian tomboy named Argenthone, who hates the company of men and prefers hunting. Applying the oldest line in the book, Rhesus convinces her that he too hates the company of men and joins her on the hunt. They fall in love, and when he dies at Troy, she wanders around the forest where they met until she dies of starvation. In other news, Greek myth isn't big on happy endings. Well, it's not entirely true. 
Research and documentation on rhesus of Thrace is so scarce, in fact, that I had to turn to a paper written in 1915 to learn anything else about him, which is funny because I'm certain C.A. Sophia read the same article. It talks about Thracian mystery cults and Rhesus's supposed place in their religion and possible character origin as a local river god. Rhesus's starting position along the river Strymon is not a coincidence, in fact. It's a reference to his father, who is supposedly a river god named Strymon. Turning Thracian rituals and cults into a campaign mechanic, though, is reaching further than even Stretch Armstrong could manage. But what the hell else did CA have to go on, really? As Rhesus, you'll be in charge of enacting religious rites and rituals, which is a fancy way of saying you have a devotion resource that you'll want to be gathering to spend on things. Thrace can't recruit agents on the campaign map, so you'll need to enact rituals by spending resources or devotion to get similar benefits. Since devotion is used to unlock epic units and recruit your countless host armies, you'll want to always have a ritual or two on cooldown. Countless host armies are Rhesus's standout feature. When you get 4,000 food and 10 devotion to spend, you can raise a host army for one of your forest settlements. One forest settlement equals one host army. But the countless host Hosts can't occupy a town, reinforce an army, or even replenish their own ranks and are frankly only good for raiding and sacking everything in sight, but at least each time you take a forest, you get one more of them, and the more you unlock, the stronger they get. So you're going to want to focus on taking forest settlements and anything else you can really burn to the ground, as you'll be so flush with wood that you can trade it to anyone that wants it and then stick it to anyone that doesn't. The whole thing sounds an awful lot like summoning a tribe of marauding forest monsters to devour the world, but I can assure you that these are in fact Thracians. They just happen to not be able to recruit agents because they're not cultured enough and fight like a slobbering horde of bear-clad barbarians who can't even tie two rocks together without a Greek explaining it first. For all this dogging, though, Rhesus and his Thracians are a welcome addition to Total War Troy. Alongside Memnon and the Amazons, they help the Trojan army feel much more cosmopolitan, with allies called from all corners of the empire to come and fight. Thrace's units, in fact, are entirely new and unique, with a roster that relies on strong shock infantry charging in with strong chariots behind him. The problem with that is that Rhesus's men fight without shields. They try and make up for it with armor-piercing weapons and excellent morale, but that's kind of like frying bacon while naked. Pork ain't the only thing that's gonna burn. To offset your obvious casualties, Rhesus comes with a 3% casualty replenishment rate by default, alongside a charge bonus. And actual gameplay tip, you should be using him to ambush as much as possible. Put a bait army out there and then wail on them when they aren't looking. Because even though you start on the far north of the map, your early game will be all about unifying Thrace and then joining the Trojan War, bringing this golden armored demigod, this bearded barbarian of the north, into the fray. And you know what? What does he look like under there? Oh, so he looks like a ZZ Top extra. You know, okay, let's just put this back on, actually. And that's a noob's guide to Rhesus of Thrace. I realize there's not much to say about him, but he really didn't do a whole lot. And you know, now that we're at the end of the episode, nearly half of it was about Diomedes and Odysseus stabbing defenseless people while they slept. Those guys really are the absolute worst. Thanks for watching.